brother. It's amazing what goes around turns around, you know, and uh, his mother changed his diapers, and I used to give him weapons for being a bad boy, and now all of a sudden he thinks I'm a pretty nice guy. <laughs> so uh, what the hell, I'll take whatever I get, but uh, that was quite a surprise at uh, Bobby Pole. I had no, no idea who that was going to be, and... Uh, Greg, of course, is a great entrepreneur in his own right. He's an entrepreneur as a mayor, and uh, he's the lead speaker for the Kaufman Global Awards this week out in, uh, in uh, Kansas City. And uh, he, was, he committed to that before this particular uh, dinner tonight, and uh, I encouraged him, obviously, to go ahead. That was, that was uh, more important. But I really appreciate the committee for having this right next door to my house. Um, about 52 steps right out the front door is where I live. And I think they might have been afraid that I can't drive anymore in the dark or, you know, maybe I'd have a cocktail or, or something. But it, whatever it was, it was awful nice to have it right here so I can crawl home. Uh, but uh, um, Bobby told me when we started that he wanted to get this over in an iron. I said, oh, is John Y. going to be the only speaker? <laughs> and uh, uh, that's the shortest one I ever heard John talk, and I appreciate you cutting that short, John. So uh, I serendipitously gave somebody a few uh, uh, slides, uh, pictures the other day. Did they use those, or do we just wing this thing right now? Is there something? Is, is there any pictures or anything? We didn't play that, did we? Right when we when we're doing the. I'm not responsible for this. After several successful years with IBM, George Fisher founded Metrodata, which became a leader in the field of proprietary education. The company was purchased by Sun Oil in 1975. In the next year, George and his son started Servin International, which became the number one manufacturer of ice and beverage dispensing systems. That same year, he joined Governor John Y. Brown Jr.'s administration as Secretary of the Governor's Executive Cabinet. Mr. Fisher is a former chair of the University of Louisville Board of Trustees, Junior Achievement, and others. George received an honorary doctorate of public service from Spalding University and was elected Louisvillian of the Year in 2012. Congratulations to George Fisher on his Hall of Fame induction. Well, I'll take you around the world in uh, no more than three or four minutes. I was born in the West End, four or five miles from here, and uh, grew up on Shawnee Golf Course. And by the way, I don't want to forget uh, my wife and family right here. Mary Lee, would you stand up, please? And uh, I, I, have, I have a table of entrepreneurs there. Lynn, my daughter, is a great entrepreneur, celebrating the 20th year of her business. Uh, Kevin and Ivy Shern. Uh, Kevin is an all-time entrepreneur. Uh, superior, superior machinery where he's putting people on the line with... Uh, on the assembly line with companies like Toyota and uh, Nissan and so on. And there, of course, is Alex here with us and Ted Smith, who's director of innovation for my uh, son, Greg, and uh, uh, one of my uh, admirers over here to the right. And I uh, married my sister, Doris. My uh, is Tony Walsh. Tony is a is an entrepreneur in his own right after getting out of the service. He, he became an electrician and then started his own company, which is now quite a company called United Electronic and United Electric. We see a lot of their trucks going around town. And then to my right sitting there is uh, Bill Rothwell, who is uh, the greatest fundraiser in the history of Kentucky. So he's an entrepreneur in his own right. Now, oh, and over here, somebody I owe a debt of gratitude and a lifetime of thanks to is uh, D. Maynard. D, would you stand up? Touch it. Uh, at that time, the only units we had were in hotel units, and now what you see is very common where you put your craft in there, and press the buttons, and so on. But what really made the company is a few years later, a customer called us and said, do you know how to make a machine? that might work in a convenience store. 
and we didn't know how to do it. But one of my sons, of course, when the guy asked him if we could do it, he said, sure, we can do that. We'll call you back tomorrow. So that we, at that time, I think we had two employees, my two sons, and four people in the factory. Uh, so that went on to become, we made that machine, which now is an ever convenient store, ever food mart all over the world. It's called uh, where you basically press a button and get your Coke or Pepsi or whatever it is. And that took off in 1986, and uh, it really was quite an international success story. I always called Servin International because I took the international name from IBM, and then I wanted us to become an international company, which we did. Finally, I get a call about 3 o'clock in the morning one day, one night, and it's a, an old friend of mine named John Y. Brown. He said, George, what are you doing? I said, I'm not doing anything right now. I'm sleeping. Why in the hell don't you go to sleep? But he has different hires than normal people. He's an unusual uh, person, uh, to say the least. So he said well, he had just become governor of the state and asked me if I would come up there. And uh, I had just, we had just sold that company, so actually I did have some free time. But I certainly hadn't planned it in government, which was anathema to me. So I went up and saw John, and he asked me to take a look at the computers and all this stuff, and, which I did, and I gave him my report and told him, you know, here's what you ought to do to get a control of this thing. And we were spending about $50 million too much on computers. But anyway, he got mad at me, not mad at me, he just got upset with me for telling him he wasn't running the state. His theme was Kentucky and company, the state to run like a business. I said, yeah, you're running like a bankrupt business. <laughs> and that's not good. So anyway, I went home. And uh, this is where entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship, whatever they call it inside a government or inside a large company is. Uh, he called me back in a couple of days and said, come, come on, get up here. I've been thinking about that thing. So I, I went up there to Frankfurt and... Uh, he said, uh, I've been thinking about it, maybe you're right. What should we do? <laughs> okay, so now you're an entrepreneur. What, do you, what are we going to do? The state is a mess, uh, you know, all kind of problems, and budgets are short, and people aren't trained. So I told him, I said, call the president of IBM up. I thought IBM, and I still think IBM is the best big company in the world, and I, I'm an alumni of IBM. So uh, uh, John, in his own style, calls out front, get the president of IBM on the phone. So about 30 seconds later, here's John Opel, who was president of, of IBM at the time. And John says, Mr. Opel, I've got one of your alumni in here. He wants to talk to you. <laughs> Puts us in, and then Mr. Opel and Tom Watson, those guys were like, uh, were like idols, idols to me, so I, I couldn't talk. I was like this. And I finally said, uh, Mr. Obo, I said, uh, you know, I used to run Manhattan and so on and so forth, but uh, we don't really need any computer help. We're doing pretty good with computers now. And we, by the way, they're all IBM computers, but what we need is some training programs. We need some personnel development. We need some schools. We need some uh, more advanced tools. And Mr. Opal said, I can't do that. I can't do that. If we did that for you all, we'd have to do it for all 50 states. We've never done that for a state. I said, look, all I'm trying to do is swap computer aid for aid in all organizational development, educational, and so on. So anyway, we ham and hauled for maybe 20 minutes. And this is what I mean. It's kind of a breakthrough idea that just kind of happened, asking IBM to come down and show you how to run a state government. John sure the hell couldn't run it. He can't run, he can't run anything. But he's a great outside guy, and he, he admits to this. And he doesn't want to learn anything about the inside. Tell, there's all kinds of stories about that. But anyway, uh, lo and behold, Mr. Opal finally said, if you all don't tell anybody, I'll do it. So John and I swore to secrecy. 
for 10, 10, uh, 10 years or something. Like but we convinced him to do it. And within, I'd say, two weeks, we had the top guys in IBM down on down in Frankfurt, top organizational, top management development, top personnel, top everything, down in state government, teaching us how to keep up to date with the best practices and so on. So that really made my service in uh, state government uh, a pleasure, working with IBM uh, during that time to improve state government. And uh, some of it's still there. Uh, most of it, because of political reasons, is not still there. Other than that, I think I'm overstayed my time. So I'm not going to... Uh, John and I tell our war stories. He stays with me when he's here in Louisville, so I'm sure I'll hear some later on tonight. Thank you very much.